Okay guys, let's talk turbos. Today we're gonna to take a look at a test between two very popular turbos. We've got a Borgwarner S475 and a Borgwarner S480. The reality is this video is less about the comparison between those two turbos than it is about picking the right turbo for your application. We're gonna show you the big things you should worry about and the little things you shouldn't. In this video, we ran a comparison between two very popular turbos. We started off with a Borgwarner S475 and then followed that up with a Borgwarner S480. Here's where the comments will get going. These two were not the same configuration. As a matter of fact, they were dramatically different. Even more so, I didn't run them at the same boost level. And here's why. First of all, if you take two turbos, that are sized to run in the power output that we tested, in this case between 850 and 900 horsepower, if both of those turbos will support that power level, if we run them both at the same boost, air fuel, timing, and temperature, guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna make the same power. The only change will be a difference in hot side, like we saw here. If one turbo has a higher back pressure than the other, there could be a difference in power. Otherwise, the power output would be the same. And if it's not the same, if there is a difference in the wheels, it's gonna be like this much. And the problem is, I don't wanna do a test that shows this much of a difference. Now, I know that there are class guys out there using a specific turbo. I can only run a 76 millimeter. And they're trying to get the most power out of that combination that they can. And that's great, I love that kind of testing for them. But for, for the five or 10 guys that are actually doing that, Doing a test that's gonna give information for five or 10 guys isn't a great video. I wanna provide information for five or 10,000 guys that can really use that information. And that's why I ran this test. So when we ran the test, I used a manual wastegate controller and I ran the test. I ran it at 10 pounds or so with the S475, left the controller the same, and then ran the S480 to find out what would happen. As it turned out, the boost pressure was higher on the S480 and for good reason. It's a function of back pressure. But that's a good test. It shows when we change the turbo, a change happens. It also shows that the S480 could support more power than the S475, which we already know. But more than that, it shows the importance of choosing the right turbo for your application. And that's what this video is all about. We're gonna talk about the big stuff that really has a big effect. We'll work our way down to the little stuff, like, <laughs> like a billet wheel versus a cast wheel, or a divided housing versus a non-divided housing, or equal length runners versus non-equal length. All the stuff that makes this much difference is not as important as the stuff that makes this much difference. So let's get started with the stuff that makes this much difference. Before we get to the results of our test, we need to understand something very important, how to choose the right turbo for our application. When you're choosing the right turbo, the first thing you need to think about is how much power do I want to make? We'll, take, we'll use an example here. Let's take a thousand horsepower turbo, like our S475 or S480, a 7875. That's kind of the normal go-to thing for most V8 LS applications. There are smaller ones, there are bigger ones. We use that as an example. So if we take our thousand horsepower S475, S480, 7875, and apply it to a, let's say, a cammed 5.3 liter. Let's say our CAN 5.3 liter makes 450 horsepower. So if we apply 14.7 pounds of boost from our 1,000 horsepower turbo to our 450 horsepower 5.3 liter, guess what happens? We applied one atmosphere, in addition to the atmosphere that's already there, basically we're gonna double the power output. 14.7 pounds on a 450 horsepower motor, we get 900 horsepower. That assumes a couple of things are, are right. You have to have the right amount of cooling with an intercooler, you have to have the right octane, you have to have the right timing and air fuel, but it's a pretty good gauge. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less, but it gives you a good idea. So 14.7 pounds of boost from our turbo on a 450 horsepower motor gets us 900 horsepower. Now that equates to right around 30 horsepower per pound of boost. So we know the turbo will do that. Here's why the turbo won't always supply 30 horsepower per pound of boost. Let's say we take that same turbo, our 1,000 horsepower turbo, apply the same amount of boost, 14.7 pounds, but we supply it to a stock 4.8 liter that makes 300 horsepower. Will it supply 30 horsepower per pound of boost now? 
No, it won't. Not because it can't. We already know it can because it did on the 450 horsepower motor. But if we supply 14.7 pounds of boost from our turbo to a 300 horsepower motor, we get 600 horsepower, which equates to about 20 horsepower per pound of boost. Now, is it because the turbo can't do it because it's not efficient, it doesn't have the right wheel, it doesn't have the magic billet wheel or the stage seven turbine housing? No, the turbo can do that. But what dictates how much power that turbo supplies per pound of boost is a function of the flow rate of the turbo, obviously, but more importantly, it's a function of the power output of the naturally aspirated motor that you're applying it to. If we take it to an extreme, we've got our 1,000 horsepower turbo, and we put it on a 100 horsepower, one liter motor, it's gonna make 200 horsepower at 14.7 pounds of boost. And then each pound of boost is gonna be worth, what's that, six or seven horsepower? And that's how it works. As long as the flow rate of the turbo can support that power output, you add 14.7 pounds of boost, you double the power output of the NA power. And it works at any boost and any power level, as long as the turbo can support that. So now that we've taken a look at that, let's figure out what we need to do now. If you've got a combination, if you've got the power output you want, if you've got the turbo, now it's time to choose the hot side. Okay, we've taken a look at the big picture stuff. You've got an engine, you wanna add boost to it and make more power. You've chosen the size of your turbo based on the required power output. Now it's time to look at the smaller stuff. We're gonna look in detail now at the hot side of the turbo. We've got the cold side, that's the power output. Now we need to look at the hot side. So if we have our 1,000 horsepower turbo, and we use that 1,000 horsepower turbo on, let's say, a 4.8 liter and a 6 liter. Okay, that combination on a 6 liter, if we have the same size hot side, is gonna produce more back pressure on the 6 liter than it is on the 4.8 liter. And the reason for that is the 6 liter is gonna make more power than the 4.8, especially down low. It's gonna have more torque, more response, more exhaust flow, so more exhaust flow, more back pressure. That's why we would size the turbo differently on the hot side for a six liter than we would on a 4.8 liter. So let's say we wanna make a thousand horsepower with each one of those combinations. On a 4.8 liter, not gonna be that hard. The back pressure is gonna be low on our thousand horsepower turbo. But on a six liter, we're gonna to have to deal with back pressure. And the way that we get around that is put a larger hot side on that same turbo to try to get it to make a thousand horsepower on the bigger motor. So remember, bigger motor, more power, bigger hot side. Smaller motor, smaller hot side. Easy to remember, they go together. Now let's take a look at the results of the comparison between our S475 and our S480. The comparison between the S475 and the S480 turbos were run on our 6 liter test motor. This was the same as the uh, Big Bang combination that we ran before that made 1540 horsepower. It was a 6 liter LY6 with ring gap, had trick flow 225 heads on it, a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 turbo cam, and a Dorman LS6 intake manifold. Our turbo kit consisted of truck manifolds feeding a custom Y pipe with two turbo smart wastegates. We had a Procharger air to water intercooler, and then we ran both of the turbos. Now we ran these on a combination of 91 and race gas so we could put timing in this thing and try to maximize the power output. We ran first the S475, and this is run at a peak boost of about 11 and a half pounds, and we'll show you the boost curves on both of these. So run at this power level on the S475. At this boost level, it made 879 horsepower and 803 foot-pounds of torque. And we were controlling, we had seven pound springs in our turbo smart wastegates, and we were controlling the boost with a manual wastegate controller bleed valve. So now let's take a look and see what happens. All we did was re replace the S475 with the larger S480. And I'll go ahead and put the specs for both turbos up here so you guys can see what the difference is between the two. So as we can see, and maybe kind of this is what we would expect, the in red here, the S480, 
was less responsive down low, and part of that obviously it had a bigger hot side. The S475 was actually designed to be run as part of a twin setup that we ran on that Big Bang motor and had run on other twin combinations. So it had tighter hot sides for that because it was designed as a twin, so it, we wanted it to be a little bit more responsive. And the S480 was more designed as a single. So this S480 had was less responsive down low, but really came on at the top. So run with the S480 and our manual wastegate controller set the same as it was for the S475. The S480 produced 977 horsepower, although P-Torque was very comparable at 807 foot-pounds of torque. It basically just shifted the curve. Now let's take a look and see why, the <laughs> why these things produce the power curve that they did. Obviously it's a function of boost. Let's check that now, out. Now in our comparison between the S475 and the S480 turbo on our 6 liter test motor, if we take a look at the difference in the power curve, obviously there was a reason for that. And the best way to take a look at that is to take a look at the boost curve. Now this is the boost curve of our S475 turbo. Started out down here below 9 pounds at around 3600 RPM and rose up to around 11 and then, you know, was kind of hovering in the 11 and between 11 and 11 and a half range. And that was with our, we were adjusting that with our manual wastegate controller. So here's what happened after we, we left the wastegate controller in the same position, basically the same bleed rate. And here's what happened after we installed the S480 turbo. So as, <laughs> as you might expect after looking at the, at the power curve, the S480 here in red, the boost response was less down low. It was a bigger turbine housing and a bigger AR. So it made less boost down low, down around 7 pounds here at 3,500 and 3,600, but made more boost at the top. It was 12.9 PSI, whereas the uh, S475 was closer to 11.4, 11.3. The crossover point here was about 5,900 RPM. So bigger turbo, bigger hot side especially, so this thing was less responsive and ultimately could make more boost and more power. Now, a lot of that is the function of what's happening with the wastegate because the how the wastegate opens is a function of the back pressure versus the boost pressure. So if we have less back pressure from the bigger turbo, then we have uh, a change in opening of the wastegate. So basically a lot of things are happening here, but we know that the S480 is definitely capable of making more power and more boost than the S475. Now we could go up and boost from the S475, but as we'll see when we take a look at the back pressure curve, there's definitely going to be an increase in back pressure to go along with that increase in boost pressure. So let's check out the back pressure curve. If we take a look at a comparison between the back pressure curves produced by the two turbos in our test, this is the S475 and this is the S480. So as you can see, the S475 in blue had more back pressure through the whole curve, you know, by a couple of pounds, six, 8.6 to 2.5, 2.6 pounds. So it started higher and ended higher because of the smaller uh, turbine side on that. So if we take a look and see, here's a good comparison. So obviously smaller turbo, more back pressure, kind of standard. So now let's take a look and see, um, let's see the boost pressure versus the back pressure here. So this is the back pressure on the S475, and here's the boost pressure versus the back pressure. So you can see, even down low, even starting at 36 or 3700 RPM, the S475 was making more back pressure than it was boost pressure. So that tells you that it's going to be fairly responsive and that the back pressure is probably going to be very high. Now let's take a look and see what happens. Let's swap this out to the S480, and as you can see, same, similar thing on the S480, although the crossover was much higher than the 3500 RPM range. It didn't happen until out at 4200 RPM range. So the S480 had less back pressure than boost pressure down low. They crossed over, and then it had more back pressure than boost pressure. So at 12.9 pounds, it had 20 pounds of back pressure. And on the S475, we had 11.4 pounds of boost pressure 
and 23 and a half pounds of back pressure. So kind of more than a two to one back pressure to boost pressure relationship on the S475. So we're getting up to the point with that S475 that we're starting to worry about back pressure on this combination. So this size hot side on, a, on using an S475 on a six liter, probably not a good idea. That's why our discussion and comparing it between a six liter and a 4.8 liter shows that you need to size the back, you need to size the hot side of the turbo appropriately for the power output and the size of your test mode. Let's get to our conclusion, guys. Okay, guys, what'd you think about the test or comparison between the S475 and the S480? <laughs> Did we totally blow it by not running them at the same boost level? Let me know in the comments, but here's my take. If you have a turbo, let's say a thousand horsepower turbo like either one of these, and you're running it at 700 horsepower and you want more power, upgrading the turbo to a more super efficient billet compressor wheel or stage 27 exhaust wheel isn't really gonna do much. Where a turbo upgrade really comes into play it's like this S475 versus the S480 test. If you have a turbo that will support more power, that's where it's gonna be beneficial. We know an S480 will make more power than an S475. It flows more air, it will make more power, that's where it should be run. Does that make the S480 a better turbo than the S475? No, in fact, if we ran it down at six or 700 horsepower, the opposite would be true. The S475 would probably be a better choice. It's more responsive, it's in its efficiency range, and it's gonna work much better. So it's very important to choose the turbo for what you wanna do. If you have a 4.8 and you wanna make 1,000 horsepower with an S480 and you're running from 5,000 to 8,000 RPM, that might be a good choice. On the other hand, if you're choosing a turbo for a 4.8 liter that's in your pickup that you're using for towing, you're gonna want more response. So you gotta choose the turbo according to the power output and the intended usage. I'm Richard Holder, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to comment, let me know what you think. I'll keep testing.